What's going on, everybody? Welcome into another Fantasy Six Pack News Cycle. I'm your host, Dylan Clemens. Here with me, as always, is my co host, Mike LaPlante. And today is the day where NFL rosters need to be trimmed to 53. That just means it's one step closer to the to the season starting, Mike. I know. One step closer. We're finally down to our 50, uh, 53 final rosters. I mean, everybody's getting you know shifted around, um, but this is where we get all our juicy information about all of our drafts we've been doing. Yes, sir. But like always, let's just jump right into the news, and we're gonna we're gonna start off with um, this. Isn't great news for Marlon Mack, and it sucks seeing people lose their job. But Marlon Mack was released by the um, the Tex, uh the Houston Texans, and uh, that pretty much man, that pretty much means in my eyes that Damian Pierce is gonna be the RB one in Houston now. Mike, do you tend to agree? Yeah, that's been the hype going into the uh, uh, training camps and these preseason games is when is Damian Pierce going to take that role? And this is that juicy information we've been waiting for. Marlon Mack, one of the running backs that have been muddling up this backfield, gets cut. Now we're left with, you know, just Damian Pierce, Royce Freeman, um, Rex Burkhead, and it's clear. Pierce is the Pierce is the clear number one guy there. We've seen it throughout the preseason. Well, I mean, he only got eleven attempts, but he averaged seven point eight yards a carry. He got as many four less yards than the leading carrier in the preseason for the Texans, and that was Marlon Mack. And it was on ten less attempts. Damian Pierce is the guy. I'm so hyped for this guy. Um, little tidbit of information Dylan dug up here. Uh, New coach, Lovey Smith for Houston. Last time he had a rookie running back, Matt Forte, rings a bell. Um, he got 315 carries, 75 targets as a rookie. I know it's a little bit maybe of a stretch to, get, to expect that much. You know, he's not Matt Forte, but he likes to use those rookie running backs. Yeah, 100%, man. I think uh, as long as Houston's offense is competent, which it might be, I think Damian Pierce – could end up being a locked in RB two in your lineups for the for the season this year. Good, uh, good value. Yep. And then we got another running back that was cut yesterday, and that was Sony Michelle by the Dolphins, which was kind of a shock to me. Uh, but that pretty much leaves Chase Edmonds, Raheem Mostert, and Miles Gaskin in the backfield. Mike, I'm curious, um, how do you think this backfield shapes up, and who do you want at cost? Well, the, the guy that I've been targeting in this backfield would have been Chase Edmonds, and this kind of just reassures that for me because one less back, uh, one less running back we thought was going to be in this backfield muddling it up is now gone, all right? And this is the guy we projected to be the red zone back in Sony Michelle, all right? Now they got Edmonds, Gaskin, and Mostert. None of those guys are red zone backs, so we talked about this a little bit beforehand. Good chance that it's whoever's going to be in there is getting those red zone attempts, and we do project Chase Edmonds to be the lead back majority of the time in there. So it's it is quite a uptick for Chase Edmonds, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. And you you can get Chase Edmonds later in your drafts, and I'm not sure with the news of Michelle getting cut. I don't think his value is, his ADP is going to skyrocket. Like I think Damian Pierce is because the most are still there. Yes, right. Most are still there. But, yeah, I think Edmonds is uh, definitely a decent um, late value for running back. Yeah, if you got um, drafts coming up, Damian Pierce, Chase Edmonds, these are going to be guys that the ADP does not catch up with fast enough to before those drafts, and you could get absolute steals. Yes, yes. And then the next bit of news, guys, I want to jump into. This is some scary stuff here. Um, on Sunday evening, Brian Robinson was actually the running back of the Washington Commanders was actually shot in an attempted carjacking. Luckily for him, he's out of the hospital now. He got I, I don't even really know all the details, but everything's pointing that he's going to be perfectly fine. He's going to make a full recovery, which is great news. And I'm glad that happened. Or, yeah, from, uh, yes, I'm glad he's going to make a full recovery. I was just going to say, from all accounts, it sounds like Mike Garofalo said that, you know, Granted, this is a scary, scary situation, and I'm glad that all signs are pointing up for Brian Robinson. Um, but he is extremely lucky, apparently, uh, uh, according to Garofolo. There is no ligament damage, no structural damage, no bone damage. So he said there's a very good chance that he could possibly return to the NFL field. It's not a guarantee, though. 
Yeah. Um, he w- Some good news for that, though, is Brian Robinson was placed on the 53-man roster initially, which is a good sign. He wasn't placed yes, on the IR right sign. away. So we, yes. could, we could see him this year at some point. It, we could didn't... see him this year, exactly. Yep. Um, yep. It's it's not as it's not worst case scenario, and this is a very good sign for Brian Robinson and his young career. Um, the only other thing I will say about this is, I mean, at least early now it, we get a little bit of uptick for at least less confusion in the backfield with McKissick, Gibson, and Patterson. It's one less guy, but once he comes back in, I fully expect Brian Robinson to be just as good as he was. Yep, a hundred percent. Uh, then jumping over to the next thing, this one was kind of surprising to me as well. Jimmy Garoppolo restructures his contract like to be, he's now the, still the highest paid backup quarterback, but all signs are pointing that he's staying in San Francisco. Does that worry you a little bit with Trey Lance's job security if San Francisco starts to struggle a bit? No, uh, this is, I think this is merely a business uh, transaction a smart business transaction might I add, because if they did not restructure this contract, Jimmy would have had been cut from the Niners and the Seahawks would have been able to go swipe him right back up. And they didn't want to do that. So mm-hmm. I think this is more a move to possibly think about trading him mid season. If, if there are any injuries to quarterbacks. Yeah, fair enough. I, uh, I agree. Um, and then I'm just going to go rapid fire here guys with a little bit of the fantasy relevant ish players that were cut today. Um, Tevin Coleman was cut by the Jets, so it gives a little bit more clarity with Brees Hall and Michael Carter really being the only two guys there. Um, Colts cut Philip Lindsay, Chiefs cut Josh Gordon, um, Bills cut OJ Howard. We were kind of hoping that he was going to get uh, a little bit more involved with the Bills. Not the case now. He was released. Duke, Duke Johnson was cut as well. And then, Mike, just give me 30 seconds on this. Um, Kenyon Drake to the Ravens. I know you're a J.K. Dobbins owner. Does that worry you a little bit with him being there with Mike Davis, Gus Edwards? And so it worries me a little bit, you know, early season because the whole concern was J.K. Dobbins was not going to be able to start week one. You got Gus Edwards on the PUP, and Mike Davis is Mike Davis. Mm-hmm. Um, so getting Kenny Drake there, it does muddle it up a little bit more for the early season. But once J.K. Dobbins gets healthy, I have full faith that they are going to use him as the number one. Now, to the extent of how many carries that number one gets, I'm not exactly sure, but this is projected to be a run-heavy offense. So I do like it down the stretch, but early for J.K. Dobbins, it's not a great sign. Yeah, uh, I just want to mention this. Stefania Bell uh, said in yesterday's Fantasy Focus podcast that um, J.K. Dobbins still hasn't been cleared for contact, so... Yep, and that's one just thing. Pay, that does me. Yep. Just pay attention to it. But Mike, how about you take us out? All right. Well, before I want to take us out, just one last thing that you you cut by here, just real quick. Tyler Johnson, uh, mm. you know, third round pick. I want to say a couple of years ago in the draft for the Buccaneers got cut. Maybe maybe something for the Bears to invest into. Sure, Who knows? sure. <laughs> but I'll take us out here. Thank you for joining us for another uh, episode of the F6P News Cycle. Um, me and Dylan are glad to be doing this every week with you, um, bringing you all these you know, breaking news, incoming news. Is, I, I'm sure there's going to be more to come with the season, you know, less, you know, about a week away. But for me, I'm Mike. For Dylan, he's uh, Dylan over there. <laughs> we will talk to you guys later. Have a great day.